Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna model this cute character inside of Maya and I'm gonna show you step by step how to do it. I start off with the cube by clicking the cube button in the top menu and I smoothed it twice with the smooth tool that you can find inside the modeling toolkit on the right. I then created a sphere and scaled it up to fit the smoothed cube and I put it in light mode by clicking on the magnet icon at the top. I selected the vertices of the cube and scaled them down so they attach to the sphere's surface. And now you have a perfect sphere with a great topology. I'm using W to move, R to scale and E to rotate. I then duplicated the head with Ctrl D to make the body. To switch from object mode to vertex, edge or face mode you can either use the menu on the right, or you can do it simply by pressing the right mouse button. I use the multi-cut to create a new edge, and you can hold control and middle mouse button to create an edge exactly in the middle between two edges. Another way to do it is to press control, right mouse button, go to edge ring utilities, and to edge ring and split. To repeat the last command in Maya, you can press G on the keyboard. You can press B on the keyboard to activate a soft selection, and by pressing B along with the middle mouse button, moving left or right, you can make the selection bigger or smaller, to make it affect more or less vertices. To scale the faces along the normals, you can press W, Control, middle mouse button, and moving left and right. You can go to Shift, right mouse button, edit edge flow to adjust the shape of your mesh. For the arms, I created another cube, I smoothed it once and I deleted the top faces by pressing delete. I then selected the edges and press Ctrl E to extrude them. To extrude, you can also press the Extrude button in the menu on the right. To change the position of the pivot, you can press D, move it where you want and then press D again. You can press 1 and 3 on the keyboard to switch from normal to smoothed preview. To soften the edges, click Shift, right mouse button, soften other edges, soften edges. To reset the pivot direction, you can simply double click on the third icon on the left and click Reset. I duplicated the arm and I moved the pivot at the origin by pressing D, putting the zeros at the top and pressing D again. Then I froze History and Transformations by clicking the two icons in the menu at the top. And in the channel editor on the right, I put minus one in the Z axis to flip the arm. Depending on where you model the arm, you may need to put minus one in the X axis instead. In this case, I modeled the arm in the wrong side of the body, so I'm flipping it on the Z axis. For the leg, I duplicated the arm and I deleted the faces at the top that were not straight, and I moved the top edge to make it longer. For the tail, I duplicated the leg and rotated it. If you press J while rotating, you will activate the snap rotate mode, so the rotation will be more precise. For the ears, I started with a new cube, scaled down the edges at the top, I added more edges and I moved the vertices from the side view to give them the shape I wanted.
to make the inside of the ears. I extruded the front faces with the offset and then I extruded again inward. To make the dress, I duplicated the body, deleted the bottom faces and scaled the bottom edges to make it wider. I then extruded it inward. If your faces are black after extruding, you can go under Mesh Display and click Reverse to make them grey again. You can delete the faces that you already know they're not gonna be seen the render to make the scene lighter and the rendering faster. I created a color by duplicating the dress, I deleted everything except for the top part and I moved the vertices around to make a shape that I liked. If you want to slide a vertex along an edge without moving it outward or inward, you can select Edge Slide under Transform Constraint in the menu on the right, or you can press Ctrl Shift while moving the vertex. This works as well for the edges that can be slided along the faces. To group an object, you can press Ctrl G. For the end of the dress, I created a shape starting with a cylinder and I duplicated it a few times. I then combined everything together under Mesh Combine at the top and I merged the vertices together between the shapes Pressing Shift, right mouse button, merge vertices, merge the center. I then use the bend tool that you can find under the form nonlinear bend to rotate my shape and make it circular. You can edit the parameters of the bend tool inside the attribute editor on the right. You can press H to hide an object.
Here you can see me using the live mode again like I did at the beginning. This time, I put the head in live mode and I selected all the vertices of the eye to attach it to the head. It's better to duplicate the head as smooth as the first, so there will be more vertices where the eye can be stamped too. The lattice tool helps you easily scale or change the shape of one or more objects. You can find it under the deform window at the top and you can edit a lattice grid in the channel box on the right. To add a material, you can select one or more objects, right click and go to assign a material. If you don't see the Arnold option like me, you'll need to activate it inside the plugin manager. Now you can add an AI standard surface material to the objects and change their colors and reflections in the color and roughness parameters. Under Arnold Lights, you can add the lights you want in the scene. Under Create Cameras, you can create a new camera where you can render your scene and you can edit its parameter, such as the focal length, in the attribute editor on the right.
To make the background, I started with the plane, I extruded an edge and I beveled the one in the middle and I added a lot of subdivisions to it to make it smoother. For the lights, I usually add a skydome light and two area lights, one in the front side of the character and one in the back, in the opposite side from the front one. If you want to save a PNG of the character without the background, you can hide it before the rendering, but you have to remember to put the camera visibility at zero in the Skydome light parameters, inside the attribute editor first. The backlight is gonna help you detach more the character from the background. If you want to easily pose a character, you can organize the pieces into groups by pressing Ctrl G. For example, I created a group for the head, one for the body and the dress, and I left the rest of the pieces separated. Once you're done with the pose, the last thing you need to do is go in into the render settings at the top and select on a renderer in the render using section and select the resolution that you want your render to be. In the Arnold render section, you can increase the value inside the camera and the foot sliders to have a higher quality image, but keep in mind that this is going to increase your render time. Another thing you can do to have a higher quality render is to increase the number of the samples of each light inside the attribute editor. Once the render is done, you can go to File, Save Image to export your image. I usually select the Color Manage Image option, so it looks like the image that you see in the render viewport. This is the final result, I hope you like it, and I'll see you in the next video.